Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Anton off to as usual and today I've got something really cool lined up for you guys. It's time for another best of the rest video from the 1k subscriber replay contest and today I'll be showing you two videos both in the T69, the tier 8 American autoload medium and this tank is absolutely awesome and I really can't wait to get my hands on it and in the course of these two games you'll hopefully see why. Now. This is CG4679, so I'm just going to call him CJ, because, uh, yeah, it's quite a long name. But a massive shout out to you, CJ, because uh, you sent him this really awesome game, and you can see right there, CJ emptying, uh, emptying his entire clip into a Lorraine, and one of the major drawbacks with the T69 is that its penetration is not that good at tier 8 but if you're firing at enemies like the Lorraine it really doesn't matter. Now he's on an encounter battle on steps and he's headed over to the east side of the map to contest for the base. Now this is a tier 9 game so he's not the top dog so he has to be quite careful here because he's got stuff like the AMX 5120, uh, the Lorraine, the E50 shooting back to him. And here he encounters the E50, the E50 is playing quite stupidly, giving CJ his side. So CJ gets a shot in, but he misses his other two. And now he's got one shot left in his drum. Now he decides to go for a reload, which I think is the right decision here, because not all that much is going on, so yeah, he's got time to reload. Now you can see his team is being, uh, is kind of outnumbered, quite a bit here. There are loads of enemy tanks, not that many tanks on this team. And one of the great advantages of American autoloaders is that the, uh, the rate of fire is really high. That means in the clip they reload really quickly and the entire clip reloads really quickly too. So right here you can see how quickly CJ can pump up those shots. It's really impressive. And that allows him to take over Lorraine really easily before he retreats. So now this T-34-3 is uh, advancing and CJ is going for a reload again. So he has to be careful here, because he doesn't want to get hit. Now, this T-34-3 is flanking round, and basically there are only three tanks on CJ's team left here, uh, against loads of enemies, so they do not really stand much of a chance, it seems. His first shot is kind of a bit poor, really, it uh, bounces off a turret, but therefore his second hits the engine flush and sets the T-34-3 on fire. And I'm not sure, maybe he's using the... 105 octane gasoline or something, but he doesn't use a fire extinguisher. Maybe he hasn't got one or I don't know But uh, he just burns out for 700 HP about but now CJ here is the only guy from his team left Immediately on this flank and the base capture is going up really quickly. So there's a lot of pressure on him right here and Here he makes the right decision because he realizes base is being capped he cannot afford to en uh, engage that T-34-3 and he manages to break the cap at I think 96 capture points which is just really good but he has to do it again because the cap counts going up again he ignores the AMX-5120 and now this is really clutch here because the AMX-5120 is coming for him but he managed to reset the cap quite a big bit because without CJ this game would have been definitely lost so now this AMX-5120 here is really putting the pressure on CJ puts a shot into the T-34-3 but now he has to reload and oh my days <laughs> AMX-5120 misses a shot but I I think he has to reload or well, I'm really not sure but this is this is so clutch here oh my days he's only got six shells of AP left so here's the AMX-5120 coming round again he has that and the thing is, he only has to put one shot into CJ, and CJ's down, but he bounces, the 5120 bounces, and he CJ misses his last shot, but he puts three great hits into the 5120, doing a lot of damage, <laughs> and, oh, he was, it was just, it was really well played, but there's loads of luck involved here, too, but AMX 5120 just missing him and bouncing. Oh, that was just so good. <laughs> so, the cap count is quite far down again. And now you can see that CJ has to load his heat ammunition because he's run out of AP ammo. So, um, he's not really a premium noob. He's just like, he hasn't really got a choice. So, he takes out that IS-3. And the problem is that any of the enemy tanks in the cap circle can easily take him out now with one shot. But thanks to CJ, his team easily secures the win in this game. Without CJ's input, 
this game would have definitely been lost. And this has been one of the closest and most intense games I've seen in a long time. And yeah, massive shout out to UCJ. This was really cool. I really enjoyed watching it. It had so many great moments in the game. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at the post game stats. So these are the post battle results. CJ managed to get 86,347 credits, which is quite impressive, and a ridiculous amount of 7,365 experience. But that was for his times three for first victory of the day, so there was some kind of special going on, and also he was running a premium account. He got a mastery badge and a high caliber, which is quite nice. In the team score, we can see that he got the most experience by far. He got twice as much experience as the second best on his team for IS8. And I mean, this was a tier eight, uh, a tier nine game, and he, the T69 really is not that good at facing higher tier tanks. But he did really, really well. He got three frags and dealt out an amazing 5,650 damage, which was again more than twice as much as the IS8. He was second best. In the detailed report, we can see that he fired 26 shots, of which 23 hit, and 21 penetrated, which is actually quite impressive, considering that he was firing a lot on the move, and the game was very touch and go. He dealt out 5,650 damage, as I already mentioned, which is really a lot for a tier 6 medium tank. He received 6 hits, of which only 3 penetrated, so 3 bounced. He was really lucky, but he also showed some really good skill in angling his tank. He received 2,130 potential damage, it's nearly two times his HP pool, so that's quite cool. He damaged seven enemies, destroyed three, and also picked up 287 spotting damage, or maybe that was tracking damage, I'm not sure. Yeah, so that was that game, and uh, it was just really impressive. I, As I said, I haven't seen a game that was this enjoyable for a long time in World of Tanks. And thanks a lot CJ for sending it in, I hope you appreciated me uploading it. But I've still got another game lined up for you guys, also in the T69, so let's head in and check it out. So this is our second game for today, again in the T69 as I said, and now we spawned on Tundra and uh, this is Planet Noob in his T69 obviously. Uh, okay, I'm saying that a bit often. So, yeah, um, he's on Tundra and he's following this KV-1S up to the eastern side of the map on the zero line, which is where a lot of medium and heavy tanks often go to battle it out on this tank, uh, on this map, sorry. Uh, so, the KV-1S being quite aggressive and they spot an Indian Panzer the T-34-3. The sixth sense goes off, so that means he's obviously got a very good crew on this tank. And Planet Noob's playing it very cautiously here. Not being too aggressive, and there's an enemy T29. Looks like, yeah, he's coming forwards. Okay, I think that shot may be trapped, I'm not sure. But uh, that T29 is just staying there. I think he's trapped, probably, otherwise he would retreat. So that allows Planet Noob to. He takes one shot, but in turn, he empties his entire magazine into the T29. So that was definitely worth it. So the score is 1 1. And this is a tier 8 game, so Planet Noob's. Uh, in a very good matchup, basically. And he's got loads of support here, so it looks like they're probably going to win this, but he has to be careful because there are always lots of snipers camping up there on the ridge. So he pokes ba um, f um, behind this rock and tries to take up his Indian Panzer quite successfully, securing his third, uh, first kill in the game. And now he retreats, and thankfully the T-34 lets him through, because otherwise that could have been quite a bad situation for Planet Noob. But Planet Noob reclips, and he looks at the map and he realises, okay, our enemies are about to break through on the west of the map. So he decides to relocate, using his reload to, uh, yeah, to relocate basically. is something that you can really do in autoload, especially fast autoloaders like the French tanks, or this one. Because uh, in your reload, you're basically ineffective, so you may as well relocate and adjust to changes on the battlefield if you can't fire shots. So there's the Tiger 2, and the Tiger 2 is a really tough nut to crack from this distance, especially with a T69's gun. So, and basically, if he wants to have a chance of penetrating the Tiger 2's glaciers, lower glaciers, he has to fully aim a shot, which will really, sh which will really slow down the rate of fire. So there he gets quite lucky. And now he's spotted, but he stays here, 
And let's see if he, yes, the second shot. And oh, he's so lucky. That shot sets the tiger two on fire and kills him. Getting a second kill, okay. So now um, Planet Noob's in a very good position here because he can basically flank round and get these enemies in the rear here. But he's still reloading. So I must say I really don't like what he's doing here because he's kind of exposing himself to enemy fire and he gets detected long before he's finished his reload. But now he has finished and he starts emptying his clip into the T-34-3. And his last shot's gonna go into the engine deck of the T-29 but it doesn't set him on fire. So the score 75 so things are looking quite good for Planet Noob's team here. And this VK3001D is uh, just shooting at the T29, but it's not really helping. So, the Carnarvon ammo racks Planet Noob and Planet Noob repairs because being ammo racked in auto loader during your reload is not very nice. So, there's an A20, it looks like he's going to push forward, and Planet Noob's retreating because uh, there are quite a lot of enemies up there, and basically. His team, the, the lineup of his team is not looking that good anymore. He puts a quite a good clutch shot into the A20. And basically what he was saying right there was his entire team is concentrated on the zero line. And the enemy team has got control of the entire rest of the map basically. And that's really not good. So the score is 99. And it's actually, the positioning is favourable to the enemy team. So Planet Noob's really clipping here. And he has to play this really cautiously because it's still all open and really the enemy team has got the advantage here. So there's the enemy IS3 spotted so he retreats because he hasn't fully reloaded yet. And you see, can see that he has decided to load heat rounds premium ammo now. Because this game is really close and I think he really wants to secure a victory here. I mean, of course, you could say that he's a premium noob, but really, in the T69, the penetration is not very good. So, to make sure that he penetrates each shot, he really has to load premium ammo. Of course, he could go for lower glaciers, but that would really slow down his rate of fire, because he would have to fully aim each shot. So, now he's reloading again. He's reloading heat again, which arguably would not be necessary against an IS. But, I think he just really wants to make sure to... Uh, win this game at this point. And Arty gets a shot into the IS, breaking the cap. And Planet Noob's reloaded, so here we go. And this first shot misses, second shot bounces, although it's heat ammo. So now he has to make both shots count to take this guy out. He's going for the cupola, and that was really poor play by the IS there, because if he had waggled his turret or went back into cover, he would have survived. But um, Planet Noob was unlucky, and he aimed his first two shots quite poorly, but the IS really didn't take advantage of that, and that was the IS's fault. So things are looking a lot better for Planet Noob's team again now. The score is 12 to 11 and it was 12 to 10 a few seconds ago. So yeah, things are looking better but still, they can still lose if they play really stupidly. But basically, they should win this game. So Planet Noob knows that there's a Carnarvon up there. So he's pre-aiming at the spot where he hopes that the Carnarvon's going to appear. He has to be very careful because he's on 364 health. So two shots from the Carnarvon would be enough to kill him. And there he is, and that was actually not very good there, what, yeah that wasn't very good what Planet Noob did there, because the Carnarvon basically got the shot into him without him doing any damage to the Carnarvon, so that leaves him on 145 health, meaning that even the E25 can now one shot him, so he has to be very very careful. And probably the E25 is loading premium ammunition at this kind of end game situation. So I'll quickly speed the game up a bit here. Um, he knows where the E25 uh, is about, he knows that he's up there in the mountain somewhere, and Planet Noob decides to go round to uh, get a better angle on the E25, because he doesn't really want to engage the E25 from an angle where he knows that the E25 will be waiting for him. So the E25 spotted and he's on 3 HP. So Planet Noob aims at him, and right here you can see the really low aiming time on the T69. So his first shot misses, he's going to fire another blind shot as it seems, and yeah, 
but he doesn't get the six scope. If he gets another kill, he's on top gun. So, uh, yeah, he goes for reload again, reloading AP shells, and he's thinking about changing the angle because I'm not. I don't think the E25 spotted him because I don't. I don't think six cents went off. I'm not quite sure, but. Yeah, he decides to change the angle anyway, coming from another direction, because even if the E25 didn't spot him, the E25 is probably expecting him to be coming from where he was a few seconds ago, because uh, Planet Noob fired a few shots, so the E25 knows about where Planet Noob's last position was. So he has to be quite careful. And, let's see, where is he? We also don't know where the enemy artillery is, so maybe Artie is waiting behind a corner, waiting to shotgun Planet Noob, and he's spotted, so he gets to cover very quickly. He stays on the move, he knows that he's in cover from the E25 now, but he has to stay on the move because he doesn't know where the Artie is located, and the Artie could get shots into him, so he has to be very, very careful here. Now he's probably re-stealthed by now, so we can advance further. He's trying to use this, these bushes here to spot the E25, but it doesn't work. So he just decides to advance. And uh, as I said, the E25 only has to pen one shot to kill him. And there he is. The E25 fires, he only tracks him, and Planet Noob fires, and they both fire at the same time. But Planet Noob survives, taking out the E25, getting his top gun medal. And now there's only the RT left, so basically they've won this game. Uh, the FE three or four is capping, which is quite funny. And here we go. His first shot is absorbed by the M40's tracks, but he tracks with a second shot, and his third shot takes him out, getting his seventh kill. What a game! What a game! Very very well played by Planet Noob. Made the right decisions at the right right time. He took some unnecessary damage at some points. I will say that. But still, it was alright, because in the end, he managed to win the game for his team. And, I mean, obviously, the other teammates contributed as well, like the T-34 or the FE-304. But um, Planet Noob definitely was the most important input from his team here. And, yeah, big shout-out to you, Planet Noob. Thanks a lot for sending this game in. And um, let's see the post-game stats. These are the results of that game, he got 93,724 credits and 1,720 experience, that was without a premium account and without a daily double. He also picked up his mastery badge in the, T29, uh, in the T69 and the Top Gun medal. We can see that he got the most experience by far on his team, he got twice as much as the T34 who was second best and he also picked up a massive nearly 5000 damage and 7 kills which is really impressive. On the enemy team, well the E25 actually was really good, he got 627 experience for a loss and the Carnarvon and well the enemy team generally was quite good actually for a losing team. He fired 31 shots of which 28 hit and 27 penetrated, allowing him to do this 5,000 damage nearly. He received 9 hits, of which 6 penetrated and 3 didn't, which is quite nice. He received 2,160 potential damage, which is quite s similar to the potential damage received by CJ in the last game. He detected 2 enemies, damaged 10, which is really a lot, and destroyed 7. And uh, also 1,256 damage was done upon his spotting, and he travelled quite a distance as well as in that game. He didn't have a premium account, but still he was able to run a massive profit on that game. He picked up 1,720 base experience, which is really impressive. And um, yeah, this has been, again, one of the best games in the replay contest so far, in my opinion. And I really cannot wait to get my hands on the T-69. It seems to be such an amazing tank. I I'm definitely going to keep it once I have it. At the moment, I'm at the T-29 in that line, which is not very good, actually. But I'm grinding towards this tank and the tanks that come after it. And I'm really looking forward to playing it. And I hope you enjoyed these games and the commentary on them. If you did, consider rating them or subbing to my channel. And I hope I see you all in the battlefield or in one of my next videos. And also, uh, stay tuned for the winners of this replay contest coming up in maybe two or three weeks time. So, thanks for watching as usual and bye-bye.